Welcome to this week's edition of Found Friday, a weekly show where we discuss topics of interest for search and content marketers. You can now view Found Friday episodes on Ginza Metrics YouTube channel and listen to the podcast on our SoundCloud account. I'm Karen. And I'm Erin. And today we're talking about all the things that are influencing your content and where your content appears in organic search results and what you can do about it. We're also going to be talking about a new feature, Universal Search, and how it's helping our users to cope with the growing real estate issues in search results. Let's start by talking about some of the challenges marketers and SEOs are facing when they're tracking the findability of their content. Yeah, so I mean, beyond the issues that everybody's been talking about with uh, local and mobile uh, kind of serving up relevant search results, there are tons of other things that are kind of popping up, um, you know, with regards to, to where you're ranking and with search engine results, results that can kind of affect what we'll call your true rank. Um, so picture this, you are checking your rank tracking tool and it tells you that you're ranking number one for some sort of high search volume keywords and you think that you're golden, right? But you go back in and double check and what you realize is you're not actually receiving the traffic that you think you should be associated with these awesome rankings. So kind of what gives, right? Um, well, while you may be ranking number one in terms of organic results, there also may be lots of other things on the page that are pulling people's attention and ultimately uh, traffic away from you. And this can be things like image results, including shopping options, videos, ads, local pack data, knowledge panel, a variety of things that can be kind of added into like what, what people are seeing when they, when they search for something. Um, so to answer this challenge, uh, you know, that's what you mentioned kind of with the new feature with universal search. So it kind of gives users a way to figure out what else is appearing on the page alongside targeted keywords and paired content so that you can figure out what your real rank is in the space, um, kind of in terms of where you are on the page and what other things people might be seeing. Let's talk a little bit more about that real rank. So let's talk about the current condition of Google search engine results pages or SERPs as we usually refer to them. Between the paid content, local pack with map results, image results, and videos, organic rank rankings may not mean what they used to for a lot of marketers. Can you tell us how the new universal search feature um, in the Ginza Metrics platform is addressing that? Yeah, so I mean, with SERPs, right? Like obviously search engine result pages have uh, really changed over the course of time as has, you know, just the general way that search engines work, how the algorithm is structured, what's served up, when and where. So kind of traditionally what it was was a lot of just, you know, like organic listing of content, um, you know, mostly web pages, blogs, et cetera. Um, over time, it started to include some like paid results, uh, a few ads here and there, and now it's really included to expand to include a variety of things that search engines think are relevant based on what you're looking for. Um, and it's really aimed at providing a more relevant and contextual experience for the user, but it also makes performing well a little bit more complicated for folks. Um, so, you know, one of the examples I always give is the running shoes example, right? So now if, you know, it, traditionally, if you went and typed in running shoes, what it was going to give you was, you know, maybe something like uh, fleet, fleet, fleet feet sports, uh, you know, Nike, Adidas, you know, whatever, you know, kind of like running shoe related things. But now what it's going to do is in addition to running shoes um, and just content related to running shoes or articles uh, about the best running shoes from like runner's world magazine, it's going to give you stuff like, uh, shopping results up at the top for running shoes. Um, it's going to give you uh, local map results for where you can buy running shoes in your area. It's going to then provide you below that with actual running shoe results. So while you may be in the top three uh, search results, what's going to happen is you may actually be below the fold in some cases. So Google's un uh, the new universal search tool from Ginza is going to provide context around kind of what else is appearing on the page. And what you can do is you can actually filter out stuff by stuff like ads on top, ads on side panel or bottom, um, like knowledge panel, image results, shopping stuff, videos, that kind of thing. Um, and then in addition to being able to look at that, it's also going to see all the things it's also going to show you with icons everything that's on the page so you'll be able to see is there a combination of like you know ads on top knowledge panel shopping local pack like all these things like how crowded 
is this space for this keyword? Because that's really what we're talking about, right? Is right. you're looking for a keyword and it's telling you that when you're searching for this keyword with and like what content you have ranking, how how noisy is this current SERP? Um, and that can really help you understand how valuable that real estate and how valuable it may be for you to try to continue to rank in that position for that specific keyword. So let's say you have a mix of paid and organic marketing strategies happening all at once. What are some problems you could be encountering with the new way Google is ordering content on the page? Oh man, so there's a few issues going on with this and I'll, I'll kind of mention two briefly. Um, the first is that you'll have ads and content and other content served above your organic results and therefore like in terms of SEO value, like you're making all these efforts and it's not paying off the same dividends, right? Because, you know, what you thought was, you know, rank number one or all the work that you put in to be there has actually pushed you further down the page. And so like you've got ads and ads there and results pages and like there's a lot of things kind of going on. The second is that you could actually be cannibalizing your own results. So when you have both paid and organic efforts um, for a single keyword or like group of keywords, you could be paying or working toward appearing at the top of the same page twice. Um, so like, for example, if you're Starbucks, like, and you're already ranking number one for the word coffee, which is a really highly trafficked keyword, um, like a really high search volume keyword, and also really expensive to try to pay for. Um, and you also appear number one in the local pack results for like coffee shops in somebody's area, and number one in organic results for just like coffee information, you know, do you really want to pay to do all of those things? Essentially what you can be doing is you can like flood out all of the competition um, with that, you know, or you can kind of decide if there's something that may be more beneficial than the other. So if you're in that sort of a scenario, what, what options might you have? So that, you know, the flooding everybody out thing is an option, right? Like you can right. pay to be at the top in paid results. You can be, you can keep spending money to stay relevant in the local pack, keep working really hard um, at SEO, and you can try to like drown out everyone else. So like when they get to the page for coffee, like all they see is Starbucks all the time. Um, you can also do- Happens some anyways. <laughs> right? So, you know, you can also do some analysis in terms of like how your content is ranking organically and in local pack results and in other elements and decide if you're best served doing paid search and advertising for, your current thing um, or mix it up. Like you may decide that what is better to do is to focus um, search on long tail keywords and run ads on the higher volume um, things on the higher search volume things, which yeah. is going to be more expensive because high search volume keywords are typically more expensive. Or you may decide to do the opposite, right? Which is run the ads on the lower search volume, lower cost long tail keywords and not really focus as much SEO value there um, and continue running your search and your uh, SEO uh, harder for like the harder to rank for um, high search volume keywords. Um, you know, there's a lot of other ways that you can deal with this scenario. And I know, um, one of the things we're, we're going to be talking about is, uh, like other things that what you could be considering to, to deal with these elements on the page. And a lot of this comes down to being involved in other marketing channels that Google, um, and search engines find relevant to add in information, right? Because there's image results and video results that are also being compiled now. So ensuring that, you know, if that's something that your audience is looking for and something that you have relevant information to talk about that maybe you consider participating there because what you yeah. might be able to do is to get involved in content that's on the page in a different way. Um, so that's obviously really important. Um, and some other like kinds of things that marketers need to be really concerned about still is, you know, I want to reemphasize obviously local, obviously mobile. When we're talking about local stuff, there's so much coming out. There's so much going on. Google is serving up so many local related results that if you're not tracking your keywords at both the national um, and local level, and if you're not really understanding kind of how that works for both B2C and in a lot of cases, B2B, right? And we've done shows on this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it now, but you know, we've even talked about just the fact that you can optimize your content even on a B2B perspective from a local, uh, from like that local feel is that people in the Northeast may describe things differently than people in the Southwest. And you can kind of optimize your content to be more appropriate there. You can always 
find a way to make something a little bit more relevant to your audience. Um, and mobile, like I don't care who you are, like mobile matters, whether it's tablet, whether it's phone, whatever, um, you know, some, your, your stuff needs to be findable at the very least, not necessarily everything in your site needs to be able to be consumed on a smaller screen, but the vast majority of things need to at least be findable. Well, you know the saying, if you can't beat them, join them. So what kinds of things should marketers do to get to the top of the page besides optimizing for organic search results? Um, so that's kind of what I was just saying, right, is, uh, you know, you really need to be focused on local and mobile. You really need to be kind of looking at various types of content, um, you know, go beyond just kind of trying to create better, uh, you know, go beyond just taking your existing content and saying like, how can I SEO this stuff that already yeah, exists yeah. and think about what is really actually relevant to your audience and what's showing up right now, right? Like one of the things that's really cool about uh, this universal search situation is that for keywords that you're tracking, um, you know, you need to be able to look and see for the keyword that's uh, that you're tracking, what is on that page right now, go to the page and look and see what all is showing up there right now. And can you participate in any of that in a relevant way? Well, and it's still important to produce relevant, engaging content, even if you can't rank where people can see it without scrolling. Right. Yeah, because I mean, at the end of the day, relevant content will be rewarded by audiences and by search engines. Um, it needs to be relevant at the content and keyword level, at the page structure and crawlability level. So if you're not getting where you think you should be with your search results, you know, I suggest doing kind of a, a site and content audit to see what all do you have? Are you cannibalizing your own content? Are you like staying on target with what people um, are actually consuming when they're looking for the things that uh, you're looking at? You know, the other thing that we talk about a lot too is, are you even targeting the right keywords? Are people in your industry and in your market describing things or searching the way that you think that they're searching? And one of the best ways to look at that is understand search, understand how social plays a role in that. You know, like how are people talking about things natively on social? How are people discussing them, you know, with regards to your industry and keyword discovery um, is actually a really good tool for figuring out for your specific industry what types of keywords and terms are people looking for and how do they kind of talk about it without any prompting from you? Because then what you can do is you can actually create content that mirrors how people are already natively kind of searching and discuss discussing on their own. Um, because there are so many different types of content, I really feel like we're not out of ideas. I think that, you know, one of the things I hear about pretty frequently is a pain point um, from from both in-house and agency marketers is somebody will get like a, a wild hair idea like, oh, I saw so-and-so had videos. Like, I just want some videos, just make some videos. Like without thinking like, what purpose do these videos really serve? Who are they gonna be targeted at? What's somebody gonna do with these videos? Like, is anybody, does anybody even want videos like this? Because a lot of times I think what happens is something really takes off and then what you get is different industries kind of glom onto this marketing idea or this new marketing channel without real consideration as to how it fits in the mix. And then people abandon the things that customers actually want, right? So maybe for your industry, people really do want like traditional white papers or something that's pdf or maybe people just really want like that kind of content. There's nothing wrong with that because it's what works. It doesn't matter that it's not the shiny new thing. Sometimes the shiny new thing is just shiny and just new. Um, it doesn't necessarily create conversions. So you've got a, um, we talk on previous episodes about examining the, the medium method message and also the market, which is your audience, um, and examining those things at both like kind of the full level as well as the local level, you can figure out what content to create for whom how it's going to be relevant and the right platforms and ways to share it. So, you know, that's kind of an important aspect. I think the the last thing that's kind of in, that's kind of important with universal search, right, is we're not going to dive into it today. But what you really want to get is a complete picture of what your space looks like from an audience and content perspective, but also what's going on in competitive areas. And so we're going to talk about some competitor elements in the next few weeks. Uh, that really kind of play into how to understand, in addition to like universal search telling you what elements are on the page, looking at your competitor, how they're creating some of those other elements that are beating you and examining how you can actually amp up your own efforts to beat them. So that's kind of what we're gonna move toward over yeah. the next few weeks. Yeah, I wanna go back, go back to what you're saying about the shiny new thing. Uh, you know, I just, 
read something about, oh, you should be using Instagram. You should be using all these different things for Snapchat and all these things for business. Like, yes, if that's where your audience is, you should be using the channels where your audience is. But the shiny new thing isn't always, always the best, um, the best way to go. And I also want to remind people that we have uh, several Found Fridays about Medium Method Message and some more materials on our Academy page. So you can go back and look at that too. And we'll be talking further about competitors and um, competitor search. So that'll be in the next couple of weeks. Uh, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. You can continue the conversation on Twitter at hashtag Found Friday or email your questions to me, Karen, at Thanks a lot, Erin. Thanks, Karen.